most people new to ChatGPT type in random things and hope for the best. That's a bit like trying to draw with your fingers. It's not really very accurate. So in this video, which comprises an entire playlist, I'm going to show you how you can set up and use ChatGPT so you can get better outputs from it. We go from beginner use cases to experts. If you want to try ChatGPT, you can use the free version. But to be honest, if you want to get more from it, you're better off upgrading to the premium version, which starts at $20 per month. And this will give you access to memories, It'll give you access to the latest models and it'll also give you access to some of the advanced features that I'll show you as part of this playlist. And that's what I'm going to reference inside of this particular video. Once you've set up your ChatGPT account, take a few moments to customize it. So click on your profile icon in the top right hand corner, head to settings and work your way down through each one of these settings. So you can change how ChatGPT handles notifications. You can customize ChatGPT with some personal instructions and I recommend you spend a few moments doing this. So I've told ChatGPT who I am. I've written a sentence or two about what I do and what my business is. And I've also given ChatGPT some traits which will tailor its responses. I've told it to be direct, to avoid preamble, filler and fluff and to take a forward thinking view. And I've also asked ChatGPT to be encouraging and tell it like it is. Now, if you're unsure what to write here, just think about how you like to get information from ChatGPT and also what you dislike. And there is, of course, a some prompts here that you can use or that you can add into this particular section for customizing your GPT. And you can also provide additional information and context in this section here. I'd also recommend enabling the additional ChatGPT capabilities. So web search will enable it to search the web in real time. DALI is good for generating images. If you're a coder, turn on code. Canvas is a good feature if you like to write inside of ChatGPT. And that's something I cover later on in the course. And you can also turn on advanced voice mode. Once you've customized everything inside of personalization, I'd recommend heading over to Builder Profile. So this is useful if you're going to spend a bit of time building custom GPTs. And again, I cover this later on. But basically in your Builder Profile, Add your LinkedIn, add your GitHub and X accounts if you have them and also put in your name and your email address. And this will enable people to get in touch with you after they've used one of your custom GPTs. Something else you may want to do is to connect GPT to your Google Drive account or to your Microsoft OneDrive account or even your GitHub. And this will basically save time when you want to paste in documents from Google Drive or from OneDrive or also links from GitHub. And you can also use security and subscriptions to manage two-factor authentication and your subscription to ChatGPT. Once you've created your account and set it up, and assuming you're on a paid subscription, you can select between the various models in the top left-hand corner. Obviously, these models change all the time as GPT or OpenAI rolls out new versions. So for most tasks, just go with the default model, which is ChatGPT 4.0. This is great for content creation, for research, and so on. You can use advanced reasoning if you want to use GPT for decision making and so on. And you can use O4 Mini if you need help with advanced reasoning, but you prefer shorter responses. You can also access some of the older models here as well. And there is an option to access ChatGPT 4.5, which is good for writing and exploring ideas. So sometimes I'll use this model for longer tasks or longer content creation projects. Once you've played around with ChatGPT for a bit, it's helpful to apply some of the key principles from prompt writing or prompt engineering. So this is what the boffins at Google and OpenAI teach. Basically, a good prompt comprises not one, but four different parts. And here's how the framework breaks down. You are a role who key characteristic. I need specific task for target audience or purpose. Here's my context and please format the output as desired. Now, don't worry, I'm going to show you an actual prompt so you can see what this looks like. So I'm going to remove this and paste in my actual prompt. You are a copywriter. So that's the role who specializes in LinkedIn content. I need five attention grabbing hooks for my LinkedIn posts. That's the first line. So I'm being specific with ChatGPT about what I need. I've told it what I'm trying to do. I've explained who my audience is. And I've also explained what my ideal output should look like. Then I'll just simply press the button here and ChatGPT will take a few moments and then it'll come up with a few different versions based on this prompt. If you use this four part framework, you will get something that's far more accurate 
and far more personalized than by writing a simple generic one line prompt. So you can see a few of the options popping up here on screen. And of course, I'm using ChatGPT 4.5, so this is a little bit slower. So let's take my own advice. I'm going to change the model. So I'm going to go back to GPT 4.0. I'm going to click refresh. I'm going to paste in the exact same prompt. And GPT should generate something a little bit faster. Now to access my conversations inside of GPT, I just open the sidebar on the left hand side. So in the top, I'll see all of the different custom GPTs that I've either created or found from the GPT store. I'll see all of my GPT projects, which I'll cover in a second. And I'll see all of my individual chats. Now, unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, there's no real way to organize your chats. They're basically all chronological. And once you start to use GPT for a bit, you'll end up with dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of different conversations. So how exactly should you organize these conversations? Well, if you turn on memory, you can actually search all of your chats, but I'm going to give you a few tips that, that might help. So first up, consider renaming useful chats. So simply click on the three dots, click on rename, and then you can use an emoji like a star or an exclamation mark or a smiley face and then press enter. And then you should be able to find it visually uh, in your feed. And if you have something that's an older conversation, you can do the exact same thing and it'll pop it up to the top of your feed or your sidebar inside of ChatGPT. So you can see here, this particular uh, chat with ChatGPT has now moved up to today. However, I actually find it's much more helpful to create ChatGPT projects. Now I have an entire video on the channel where I cover GPT projects in detail, but suffice to say, all you do is create new project, give it a name, And then you just follow the frameworks that I've shown you a few moments ago. So you'll add some custom instructions describing what the project is. You'll add some training data or sample files. So you can upload these from your computer. At any point, you can click on the pencil to rename the project and you can even change the color or icon. So here is a particular project that I use that helps me on my business. So you can see here, I don't have any file project files in this particular project, but I do have a rather extensive and lengthy prompt where I explain what my business is and what it does. And anytime I need to ask a question about my business, I can jump into business coach and this GPT will help me. Now let's cover some of the additional tools, which you may find helpful for using ChatGPT. So assuming you've turned on DALI image generation, you can actually prompt GPT to create images. Simply select tools, select create an image and give it a prompt. So I've asked GPT to create a cartoonish image of a creator for hook one. So this is the prompts that we used a few moments ago. And GPT or Dolly is gonna generate two different images that I can select from. Now I do find that the image generator does struggle with text. However, you can continue to prompt and re-prompt GPT until you get something that you're happy with or something that you can use. So looking at these two images, I actually prefer this response. And now I can basically share this image or download it or use it uh, for my content. Some of the other tools you may want to use include searching for the web. So what is the latest news about Microsoft? ChatGPT will search the web basically for the most relevant news stories across a variety of different sources. However, you still would potentially want to fact check anything that GPT comes up with because it can of course hallucinate or make things up. And sometimes the information can be out of date depending on what the sources are. But you can, of course, click on each one of these links to see if they're factually true or factually relevant. So here's a good example. This particular link about Microsoft layoffs uh, appears to be up to date. Whereas when I click on this particular link, it actually takes me to a 404 page. So a good example of why you can't believe everything you get from AI. Once you've experimented with search, you can also uh, run deep research. And I've used a deeper search sometimes, but I found it can take five or 10 minutes to generate a prompt. Basically it goes through academic papers and research papers and compares a variety of different sources from across the web. But it takes much longer. And for many use cases, it's probably just overkill. One tool I do get a lot of use out of is voice mode or dictation. So you can see here, once I click on voice mode or dictation, GPT will start to record my voice. And I use this quite a lot on the mobile app. That's because basically I can just narrate or dictate a prompt into GPT and I can speak for 30 or 60 seconds. And once I've finished speaking, 
I just simply click on the tick. And GPT will turn everything I've said into an actual prompt that I can paste into it. And I found that this is quite helpful and a real time saver. Write me a LinkedIn hook about why it's better to start your own business than to work for a corporate company. So here's an example of a voice prompt that GPT has turned into a text prompt. And then I can simply upload this into GPT and it'll start to output some results that I can potentially use. You can also click on the ellipsis, select add to project and put it inside one of your custom projects, or you can archive or delete it. Or alternatively, you can head over to the share button here and GPT will give you a link that you can send to anybody across the web. And you can put this on LinkedIn, Reddit, X, and even make it discoverable. And you can also access the three ellipses next to your icon in the top right hand corner as well. When you're using GPT, it's going to remember most of what you say. And it's also going to train itself on conversations you have with it. But what if you want to talk to the GPT about something that you don't want it to remember? Well, much like incognito mode in Chrome or Firefox, you can click on temporary chat, ask GPT something quickly, the interface will change and you won't have to worry about the chat being referenced in your left hand sidebar. ChatGPT also has a variety of keyboard shortcuts. So to access them, sim simply click on your icon in the top right hand sidebar and look for keyboard shortcuts. The one I use the most is of course, open new chat, which on a Mac is command shift O, but there is a variety of other keyboard shortcuts that you can use as well. You can also start to use custom GPTs for specific projects. So custom GPTs are pretty easy to find. Simply click on the left hand sidebar and then select explore GPTs. And you'll be able to browse the GPT marketplace and pick custom coded GPTs for writing, productivity, research and anal analysis, education, lifestyle, DALI, programming, and lots more. So if I go into the programming section, here's one here, AI humanizer. So this particular uh, creator or coder promises to humanize AI written content. Once I open up AI humanizer, there are specific instructions related to this GPT. So basically I just need to paste in some text and this particular GPT will humanize it. So you can have lots of different custom GPTs on the left hand sidebar. I actually find sometimes you're just better off creating your own that are specific to you and what you want to do. So to create your own, go to explore GPTs and then simply go to create. You're going to give it a name, a brief description about what it does, and then you're going to give it specific instructions. These are your prompts. Now elsewhere in the course, I will cover how to create custom GPTs in detail. You're also going to give it a conversation starter, upload some training data and then save it. So let me show you one that I created earlier. So I'm going to go to my GPTs. So these are all of the GPTs that I've created over time. Here's one particular GPT that I use for analyzing my writing style. So I'm going to click on edit GPT so you can see all of the settings. Here's an image that I generated with Dali. This is the name, this is the description, this is the instructions and the conversation starter. And of course I can upload training data or training files here. So I'll show you another one that I've created. This one generates lead magnets. So again, it has an image, description, custom instructions, and a conversation starter. So I'm going to say, create me a lead magnet about using AI to create content. And now this custom GPT based on my instructions and training data will start to ask me some questions before creating a lead magnet. So I've actually trained this based on some of the use cases that content creators would have for their own lead magnet. You may remember earlier on in the video, I explained about populating my builder profile. Well, you can see that this links to my website and LinkedIn and gives people a way for getting in touch with me. So it could be a way of subtly marketing your business or whatever it is that you do. That's a brief overview of how you can get started with ChatGPT. If you take one thing from this video, it's that you should simply use the latest model and play around with different prompts. When you get into the habit of writing prompts for various things that you do every day, remember to use the framework that prompt engineers offer. That is where you tell ChatGPT who it is and what you want, where you get specific and you where you explain what your ideal outputs should look like. If you find out a struggle, remember to experiment with voice mode and speak for 20 or 30 seconds into your microphone, articulating what it is you want GPT to do. And also consider using projects to organize your chats by context so you can quickly find them and reference them later on. Hope you found this video helpful. If you do, don't forget to subscribe to the entire playlist. 
And I've also put together an entire pack of proven prompts that you can use to write and create content with AI. And I'll drop a link to that in the description as well.